When a new villain appears spreading chaos across New York City, Spider-Man decides to use his superpowers to stop him, but his true identity is revealed. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Spider-Man, Homecoming, from 2017. After the Avengers battle against Loki and his army, Adrian Toomes and his team are hired by New York City Hall to collect all the debris left in the city. However, during the collection, the damage control department shows up and claims to have been sent by Stark Industries to carry out this work. In a partnership with the federal government, Tony obtained the right to store alien and exotic materials in his laboratories, leaving Toomes and his team unemployed. However, the group didn't leave empty-handed, as they had already collected some alien equipment left on the battlefield. When he saw the materials, Toomes had an idea for making money and, over the next few years, he used all those parts to create and sell extremely powerful weapons. Among his greatest inventions is an extremely advanced technological suit that allows him to become as powerful as a superhero. A few years later, after doing a brief internship with Tony Stark and fighting alongside him in Civil War, Peter Parker returns to his aunt's house and gets on with his life. It's not long before the young man back to his normal routine, but he is anxiously awaiting his next mission. Two months have passed and Peter has received no more messages from happier Iron Man, who is now considered his mentor. Every day after school, Peter puts on his uniform and goes out into the city dressed as Spider-Man to protect the citizens of New York. Even when he can't find any criminals to take to jail, Peter makes an effort to contribute to the population and becomes the city's most popular superhero. One night, Spider-Man sees a gang of criminals trying to steal money from an ATM and doesn't think twice about going after them. While trying to arrest those guys, Peter realizes that they are using a weapon made with alien technology and decides to get it. At that moment, one of the criminals tries to stop the superhero and fires a shot that destroys several surrounding stores. When Peter realizes that the diner across the street has been hit, he rushes to rescue Mr. Delmar and the criminals manage to escape. Frustrated, the young man returns home and climbs through his bedroom window so as not to attract the attention of his Aunt May. What he didn't imagine was that Ned, his best friend from school, would be there waiting for him and is shocked to discover that Peter is Spider-Man. After swearing his friend to secrecy, Peter asks him to leave and says that he will explain everything in detail the next day. During PE class, Ned hears Liz saying that she's in love with Spider-Man and reveals that Peter knows the superhero. He knows that his friend has a crush on that girl, so he decides to give them a chance to get together. However, Flash Thompson doesn't believe this story and challenges Peter to take Spider-Man to Liz's party this weekend, as the two are great friends. In order not to come out as a liar, Peter has no choice but to take Spider-Man to the party. However, just as he's about to enter the girl's house in costume, he spots blue smoke a few kilometers away and decides to investigate. As he approaches the site of the explosion, Peter comes across the alien arms suppliers who sold the pistol to the bank robbers. However, when his location is discovered, he is attacked by the criminals, who flee after shooting Spider-Man. During the escape, Shocker calls his boss and informs him that he is being chased by the superhero. At this point, the pair manage to escape and Peter decides to take a shortcut to be able to catch up with the criminals. However, just as he was about to climb into the van, he is captured by Toomes, who uses his technological suit to take Spider-Man for a ride in the sky. When he finally manages to free himself, the young man falls into a lake and is about to drown when Iron Man appears and manages to rescue him, having fitted a tracker to his uniform. During a conversation, Peter discovers that Stark is not inside the armor. In fact, he's out of the country and controls his suit remotely. The billionaire then orders Spider-Man to stay away from those criminals, as he has already sent a specialized team to capture them. When Iron Man leaves, Peter finds a piece of a gun lying on the ground and realizes that there is an extraterrestrial energy source inside. So he decides to take the object home. Furious, Toons calls his employees to account, because they shouldn't have started shooting in a public place to attract attention. Upon hearing his boss's sermon, one of the men begins to mock him and ends up being expelled from the team. Before leaving, he threatens to hand the group over to the police, so Toons decides to eliminate him to ensure that his illegal arms empire is not destroyed. The next day, Peter spots Shocker at his school and asks Ned to hide while he goes to investigate those guys. The truth is that they are using a device to detect the electromagnetic pulse emitted by the energy source that Spider-Man found. As they can't find it, the criminals decide to leave and, on seeing them leave, Peter sends a tracking device to accompany them, so that he can discover the location of the smuggler's hideout. After a long journey, Shocker and his partner stop off in Maryland and Peter decides to go there to investigate them. The city is not far from Washington, so the young man takes advantage of the fact that his school's debate group is traveling there and hitches a ride with them. 
Along for the ride are Ned, Flash, Liz and MJ, a mysterious girl who refuses to make friends with any of the students at her school, but takes a strange interest in Peter. During the journey, the young man receives a call from Happy, who is contacting him to find out why Spider-Man has left New York, but instead of telling the truth, Peter makes up an excuse and says he's accompanying his school's debating team to a competition. Although he has great respect and admiration for Tony Stark, who has asked Happy to keep an eye on his apprentice, Peter doesn't want to risk being prevented from acting on this mission, as he believes this is the perfect opportunity to show his mentor that he can be a real superhero. So Peter decides to remove the tracker from his uniform and enlists Ned's help to hack his suit in order to unlock all the hidden functions that had previously been blocked. After putting on his uniform, Spider-Man goes to meet Shocker and enlists the help of a virtual assistant to direct him. Finding the villains at an abandoned gas station, Peter tries to hide in the vehicle to follow them, but discovers that his webs are different. There are countless combinations for him to try out, so Spider-Man ends up fumbling as he is unfamiliar with the new configurations of his web-slinger. While hiding on a rooftop, Peter spots Toombs approaching the convoy that is on its way to the damage control department. The man then uses a device to break into one of the trucks and steal the alien technology being transported inside. At that moment, Peter appears and manages to recover the stolen items. He then begins a duel against the villain and ends up falling into the back of the truck. Seeing the young man inside, Toombs removes the device that allowed him to enter the vehicle and Spider-Man is trapped. Due to a head injury, Peter passes out and, when he finally manages to get out of the container, he discovers that he is inside one of the most secure buildings in the world, the storage vault of the Department of Damage Control. While waiting for Don, which is when the safe will be opened again, Spider-Man needs to find something to do, so he decides to have a chat with his new virtual assistant. During the conversation, the young man decides to give her a name and starts calling her Karen. He then takes the opportunity to train his costume's new abilities to ensure that it won't be destroyed the next time he's in a duel. After spending several hours trapped inside that safe, Peter begins to freak out and decides to use his wits to figure out the right combination of numbers to open the door. After leaving the department, he hitches a ride in a truck in order to return to Washington and meet his colleagues before the debate begins. However, Peter doesn't make it in time, but thanks to MJ his team manages to win the student championship. The young man's next mission is to warn Ned that he is carrying an explosive in his backpack. When he was trapped inside the vault, Spider-Man discovered that the lilac stone he gave Ned turns into a bomb when it is exposed to radiation. The young man is climbing the Washington Monument with his classmates when suddenly the Chitori core explodes, causing serious structural damage to the elevator. To prevent his friends from suffering a fatal fall, Spider-Man must climb the monument and destroy one of the windows to enter the tower. While the superhero is trying to break the glass, a police helicopter appears and the officers order him to get down. Seeing the aircraft approaching, Peter has an idea to break the window and attaches his webs to the helicopter in order to gain enough momentum to enter the building. At that moment, the elevator cables break and the hero uses his web to hold it up. However, the weight of the elevator ends up pulling Spider-Man down and he has to stick his webs to the ceiling to prevent the structure from hitting the ground. When all the students are safe, Spider-Man disappears and that night Peter returns home with his classmates. The next day, when he returns to school, Peter is called into the principal's office and given detention as punishment for not showing up for the debate. Despite not being grounded, MJ also chooses to stay in detention after school and does so only to get closer to Peter. After a few minutes sitting there, the young man gets angry and leaves, because he needs to find the guys who are selling illegal alien weapons. With Karen's help, Spider-Man manages to track down the identity of Aaron Davis, the guy who was trying to do business with Shocker, and decides to go after him to question him. Despite not being able to intimidate Aaron with his approach, Peter manages to get some information out of him and discovers the next location where Shocker will be selling his merchandise. The negotiation will take place inside a ship, so Spider-Man needs to stay outside the vessel so as not to be noticed. During the investigation, he spots Mac Garden, a man with a long criminal record, and decides to act before the criminal takes possession of the weapons. While the young superhero tries to arrest the buyers, Shocker warns his boss about the attack and Toombs doesn't think twice before taking action. He immediately gets up and walks towards Peter. Suddenly, the FBI appears and surprises the young man, who had no idea that they were infiltrating the ship. Suddenly, Toombs appears in his flying suit and Spider-Man has to get the FBI agents out of the villain's way so that they are not eliminated. During a direct duel against the alien weapon supplier, Peter manages to tear a piece out of his suit, which starts shooting everywhere. In an attempt to contain the weapon, Spider-Man covers it with his webbing and ends up causing even more damage, 
as the rays dissipate and hit the entire structure of the ship, breaking it in half. Immediately, Peter uses his webbing to connect the two parts and prevent them from separating completely. However, the workaround doesn't last long and the webs begin to break. When all seemed lost and Spider-Man no longer knew what to do to save those people, Iron Man appeared and enlisted the help of his jet-powered devices to join the two halves of the ship. At the end of the rescue mission, Stark goes to talk to Peter and lectures him for going behind his back. The truth is that Iron Man was the one who sent the FBI to keep an eye on tombs and blames Spider-Man for putting those people's lives in danger. After the great disaster caused that day, Stark orders Spider-Man to return his uniform and Peter returns home frustrated, as he is now just a normal high school teenager again. When he arrives at the apartment, the young man discovers that his aunt has been worried all day trying to talk to him and tries to reassure her. When she is informed that Peter has lost his internship at Stark Industries, May feels moved and gives up on scolding him. Until then, the woman doesn't know that her nephew is Spider-Man, but she has already realized that there is something different about him. In the weeks that follow, Peter returns to being the exemplary student he always was. After spending months neglecting his studies, he finds himself in a position where nothing else matters apart from getting good grades. One day, meeting Liz in the corridors, Peter plucks up the courage to declare his feelings and invites her to the school party, which is to take place the following weekend. When the girl accepts the invitation, Peter is overjoyed and asks his aunt to help him choose an outfit for the party. With May's help, he manages to find the perfect suit for the occasion and then goes to meet Liz. When he rings the doorbell, Toombs answers and discovers that he is the girl's father. From that moment on, Peter doesn't know how to react, but he tries to remain calm so as not to arouse suspicion. Terrified, Peter can't take his eyes off the villain and has to hitch a ride with him to the party. Along the way, Toombs takes the opportunity to interrogate his daughter's possible boyfriend and, as the conversation progresses, he begins to suspect him of being Spider-Man. Arriving at the school, the man asks his daughter to go in first while he has a brief chat with Peter. Since Spider-Man saved Liz's life in the elevator, Toombs says he'll give him a chance and orders Peter never to interfere in his business again. If the young man doesn't follow this advice, Toombs says he will eliminate him and his entire family. Not knowing what to say, Peter just gets out of the car and walks into the party, still a little lost by what has just happened. When he finds Liz, he says he has to leave and puts on the uniform he sewed himself to go after Toombs. However, on his way out the door, the young man ends up being attacked by Shocker, who has been left there as a security guard to prevent Spider-Man from going after his boss. After taking several blows, Peter ends up losing his web launcher and is unable to fight back. He is about to be destroyed by the enemy when Ned appears and uses the web launching device to hold off the villain's weapon. Spider-Man then takes the opportunity to disarm Shocker and pin his body to the side of a school bus. Peter then tells Ned that Toons is Liz's father and asks his friend to contact Happy to let him know. Before going after the man on his way to the airport, he orders Ned to track down his cell phone, which was deliberately left in Toons' car. In order to reach the villain, Peter has no choice but to steal a car and borrows Flash's convertible to help him on this mission. Despite not knowing how to drive properly, Peter manages to reach his final destination, but ends up having an accident. Luckily, there is no one around to hurt and the young man also manages to get out unharmed. Breaking into the shed, Spider-Man encounters Toombs and discovers that he is moving his office to another city. At that moment, the villain activates the wings of his uniform and decides to use them to destroy the columns that support the place. Seconds later, the roof collapses and Peter is buried under the rubble. After eliminating his adversary, Toombs decides to flee and has no idea that Spider-Man has managed to survive. The young man is trapped under the concrete beams and has to gather his strength to free himself. Even though he's wounded, he doesn't give up on his mission and uses his webbing to cling to Toon's suit. The villain plans to invade a plane to steal the cargo and changes the coordinates to take all those weapons directly to his team's new hideout. Meanwhile, Spider-Man keeps trying to break into the aircraft and the security alarm alerts Toon's to the young man's presence. Furious, he sets out to attack the superhero and tries at all costs to get rid of him. During the battle, some of the plane's turbines end up being destroyed and the aircraft begins to lose altitude. At that moment, Toombs receives an alert from his team, who order him to get off the plane because the ship is about to crash. However, the man refuses to lose all those goods and tries to stop the crash. When the aircraft is already below the clouds, Peter realizes that it will soon crash into the city's buildings and thousands of New Yorkers will be eliminated in the crash. To prevent this from happening, Spider-Man uses his web to pull on one of the plane's wings and manages to divert its course. This measure does not prevent the collision, but it does reduce the damage caused by the accident and, luckily, no one is hit during the fall. 
Despite being injured and bewildered, Peter manages to survive and, on getting up, ends up being attacked by Toombs once again. As he is still recovering from the accident, he is unable to defend himself and faints after being hit several times by his enemy. Seeing the cargo compartment intact, Toombs decides to let go of the young man and tries to take the box. At that moment, Peter wakes up and realizes that there's something wrong with the villain's mechanical wings. In an attempt to save him, Spider-Man pulls his opponent back to the ground, but Toombs remains determined to escape and, when he manages to take off, his uniform explodes. Peter quickly runs through the flames in an attempt to save him and manages to pull Toombs' body out from under the rubble, saving his life. Minutes later, Happy and his team show up and find the criminal trapped in a tangle of webs. That night, they finally manage to arrest the man who had been wanted for several months. On Monday, Peter returns to school and sees Liz leaving. The girl has gone there to say goodbye to her friends and collect her things, as she is moving to another city with her mother. Before saying goodbye, Peter apologizes for what happened at the party and manages to make up with the girl. Now that Liz is no longer at school, Professor Harrington needs to select a new leader for the debating team and MJ is the one. During a meeting with the group, Peter receives a message from Happy and goes to the bathroom to find him. At that moment, the man reveals that Stark has asked him to take the young man to the new Avengers headquarters and Peter is impressed by the beauty of the place. A few minutes later, Stark appears and congratulates him on having made amends for his mistakes. The billionaire says he was wrong about Peter and decides to take him back as an apprentice. After giving Spider-Man back his uniform, which is now even more technological, Stark advises him to get dressed, as he has prepared a press conference to introduce him to the world as the new member of the Avengers. Next, Peter will get to know his new lodgings, as from now on he will be living in that tower. Upon hearing this, the young man thanks his mentor for the opportunity, but says that he prefers to continue living in New York with his aunt for the time being, because the city needs a superhero. While Peter waits in the car, Pepper appears and informs him that the reporters are impatiently waiting for the big announcement. At that moment, Stark picks up an engagement ring and takes the opportunity to propose to his girlfriend. When he gets home, Peter finds a present on his bed and learns that Stark has decided to return his old uniform to him. The young man immediately decides to try on the costume and ends up being caught by May, who finds out the hard way that her nephew is Spider-Man. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.